In our quest to understand how life came to be on Earth, we've looked at many possible scenarios that could explain the serendipitous mixing of organic materials which led to the very first biological cell. One of the working theories for how these organic materials and molecules came to be in the first place on Earth is bombardment by meteorites. As more and more carbon-rich asteroids hit the Earth, they deposited all their material, increasing the chances of reactions that could lead to life. This is a theory. We know some kinds of asteroids are rich in carbon compounds, so planetary scientists have been studying them in more and more detail for the past few decades. Now, a team from Japan has identified the building blocks of RNA and DNA called nucleobases in some meteorites. We have detected certain kinds of nucleobases before, but this team has detected ones that have never been seen before. The Japanese researchers argue that nucleobases required for building DNA and RNA might have originally been directly delivered to Earth through carbon-rich meteorites in the very first place. To understand these findings, first let's look at what nucleobases are. Nucleobases or nitrogen bases are nitrogen-containing biological compounds which form the basis of nucleic acids. What are nucleic acids? Ribonucleic acid and deoxyribonucleic acids or RNA and DNA. We are actually familiar with nucleobases in a different context. We all know at this point that the SARS-CoV-2 virus mutates and when it does, there are certain changes that occur on its surface proteins. For example, the D614G mutation. Here at the 614th position on the spike protein, the D nucleobase, which is the symbol for aspartic acid, is replaced by glycine or G. D and G here are nucleobases of the RNA virus. There are a total of five primary nucleobases, adenine or A, cytosine or C, guanine indicated by G, thymine by T and uracil by U. These are the fundamental bricks that make up the genetic code for all life on Earth because they make up DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA both have four each of these nucleobases. DNA has A, G, C, T. Remember the movie Gattaca. The more simpler RNA has A, G, C and U. Of these bases, A and G have structures where ring molecules are fused together. Such fusing together of rings is called a purine structure and these two bases are called purine bases. The other three, C, T and U, are just a simple ring molecule and these are called pyrimidine bases. These bases come in pairs in our DNA, they are called base pairs and they make up the rung of the ladders in the structure of our DNA. Each base pair contains one purine base and one pyrimidine base. So we can see either an A and T pair or a G and C pair and so on. This is what we need to know to understand the latest findings. Purine base Bases are A and G, pyrimidine bases are C, T and U. These make up our DNA and RNA. And previously, planetary scientists have detected purine bases in meteorites multiple times over several decades. So it is currently well established that purine bases do form in outer space. In fact, scientists have even detected uracil or the U base in meteorites. And when was this? This was all the way back in 1979. But in the latest findings, Japanese planetary scientists have detected the other pyramidine bases for the first time, which is a really big deal. Let's see why. The researchers analyzed three carbon-rich meteorites with state-of-the-art techniques that are optimized today for measuring nucleobases that occur at very small scales and quantities. The meteorites that were studied were the Murchison meteorite, which landed in Australia in 1969. It is in this meteorite that 10 years later, researchers discovered the U base. The two other meteorites that were studied are the Tagish Lake meteorite, which fell in the Tagish Lake in Canada, and the Lake Murray meteorite, which fell in the US almost a century ago in 1933. This meteorite is the fifth largest in the world. In the Murchison meteorite, first the researchers detected a lot of purine molecules. In fact, this meteorite comes in two samples and the authors found that the concentrations varied, indicating that the meteorite was not homogeneous in 
composition. The researchers also detected the U base, a previously known pyrimidine within this very meteorite. And then they detected other pyrimidines for the first time because of newer, more sensitive techniques. How did the authors ensure that this detection was not from contamination from earthly soil? Because on Earth, the concentrations of purines and pyrimidines are much higher in soil samples and the concentrations in these three asteroids were markedly different. The researchers repeated the process for the two other meteorites and also found varying purine and pyrimidine concentrations all of which were unique and different from each other. So each of these space rocks underwent their own compositional evolution individually. The team also detected other nitrogen molecules that are great indicators for the process of nucleic acid formation. Some are catalysts for molecular synthesis processes, which could potentially be the reactions that form these bases. These compounds are in fact quite abundant on all three meteorites. These findings from the Japanese team have closely mirrored what has been projected and predicted in simulations and laboratory experiments that replicate conditions in space before the formation of the solar system and Earth. With these findings, the authors put forth their conclusion and the proposal that these nucleobases that make up the fundamental blocks of life could have been at least partly first generated by photochemical reactions in outer space when the sun was just forming, which then led to them being incorporated and embedded into asteroids while the solar system continued to form. Then some of these asteroids went on to bombard Earth in the form of meteorites and deliver these compounds to the planet and eventually life formed. This is a theory now and there is no way to tell just at this moment whether this is the most accurate theory out there for how life came to be on Earth. Going forward, as our technology improves and our theoretical knowledge of the solar system improves, maybe within the next few decades, we would get a definitive answer for where those chemical reactions occurred on Earth that created life and how.